Okay, I want to go over COT data and how it can be applied to your market analysis. It's an invaluable way of finding entry points um, based on how traders are committed in their positions in the market. Um, it's another factor along with Elliott Wave, along with candles, along with trend lines, support and resistance levels, and general patterns and small trader sentiment that um, will offer an edge in the market. So um, to start with, there are at least three sites that give COT data. Two of them, all three for free actually, um, one with a price option. One is Finviz, F-I-N-V-I-Z at the bottom here. A second is Oanda. And a third COT base, which gives a free basic view, and then for a small charge, a valuable set of correlated data that will give new insights into the market. Um, for what I'm going to show you, I will use Finviz. It's attached to the bottom of all the charts. Um, so there are two ways that I use this. I use it, first of all, to find extreme commitments by traders, um, by large traders, that is, non-commercial traders. So it's the red line in this on FinViz. So extreme positions by traders, traders, and the other way I use it is by a mean reversion to zero, the zero line here. So to go over both methods, first of all, extreme positions, ex extreme commitments, starting with the New Zealand dollar. At current levels, it has reached an extreme point of approximately 30,000 contracts. So if you look back over weekly data, last time this happened back in 2013, it found a high and retraced. Um, you can also put this on a monthly chart and see long-term data. And it is at an extreme point here. So going with also the bearish daily divergence, there does seem to be a trade set up here to the downside. And a number of ways we can view this, we have this established as a WXY three-wave pattern. This can either be viewed as the first leg of a more bullish view, which it probably will be judging by this whole idea here, or it could be viewed as an X wave as well for a larger three wave pattern. Now, I don't know which one it will be, but I tend to favor the bullish side overall. It's just that we may be looking at a three wave correction before another move up, another possible move up. So going back to the COT data, um, it is an extreme level here, and what I would expect to happen um, is to see this revert essentially on a new, if this is a new trend up, to see this essentially revert back to the zero or towards the zero level here, where it will find a new amount, a new commitment of traders to enter the market to the long side, perhaps. Um, so I'm still covering the first aspect of this, which is extreme COT data, and I dipped into the second idea there of reversion to the mean of zero. So this is one extreme chart at the moment, extreme commitment in New Zealand dollar. Another one, euro is approaching that. Given the bullish move here, we have a rather high level of committed traders here, looking back to 2014, 2013. So a correction here, as I've been talking about on um, with the LA wave pattern, perhaps wave four to come in and maybe another high, but it is in that resistance zone here between 114 and 116. Now on a long-term chart, on a monthly chart, there have been higher levels than this, but that was during an extreme bullish phase here. And at the moment, going by patterns and resistance levels, it does make sense here to see this extreme commitment also look, making it look like a correction is needed. So that's some more data. Now I'm um, going back through some past charts. The Canadian, US Canadian, which I've been focusing on a lot lately. Um, the chart in front of you is Canadian US dollars, so it's reversed from what we usually see. But in any case, um, going into the last high on US Canadian, traders were positioned to an extraordinarily extreme amount, minus 100,000 here, contracts. 
And that was right at the point when I was saying that we're going to see a turn and the downside would commence in US Canadian. So it's just rather funny that there was this extreme position here. Now, there's no need to gloat about it because price speaks for itself. Price action speaks for itself and teaches in its own way. It's just rather funny to see that. If you go on a monthly chart, that is a true extreme in the commitment against the Canadian dollar. So um, I will come back to this in a moment. Another one that reached an extreme, actually, was cable, pound US dollar, back in... Uh, when was that? About February or so, when we were looking at the triangle possibility. Minus 100,000 again, and since it is since then it has rallied very strongly. And uh, that is another extreme level going back on the monthly chart. So large traders, non-commercial traders, were positioned at extreme levels in pound and the Canadian dollar against both currencies. And it's this type of COT figure, this extreme figure, which is very useful in positioning yourself for the next move. Because when you see these extremes, if you can combine it with a um, with other data data in your chart, such as as I've been over candles, Elliott wave, support and resistance, trend lines, and so on and so forth, and uh, perhaps some fundamental views as well, it gives you a very big edge in these markets. Now, traders need to commit, in this sense, large traders need to commit to the market in order to move it. And when you have such an extreme here of minus 100,000 contracts out against the pound, it's relatively, it's unlikely that new traders will be able to come into the market to force it lower. And that is the issue here too. The Canadian dollar was so extreme that it's less likely on a historic basis that new traders will be come in to force it down further. So going back, those are two historic ones that have happened already, pound and Canadian dollar. Looking at the to the future, New Zealand US dollar has that type of thing going on where it's probably unlikely, it's certainly less likely the new traders will enter here to force up price. We'll probably need to see, judging historically, some type of correction back to mean level of zero, towards zero, and then a re-entrance, re-entry of traders. Perhaps similar with euro as well. So that's the first thing I use this data for, extreme levels, which suggest that the buyers or the sellers are exhausted and any type of extreme in the commitment of traders or in sentiment, as I've been over in a weekend video, does allow let's say, a smart and contrarian view to take advantage of extremes of emotion and extremes of commitment, which often run against price. Okay, the second way I use COT data is um, when the commitment reverts to the zero line. You see here, the central line here between these highs and lows on each chart is a basic level. So I still use the large trader data for that, the non-commercial trader, the, sorry, the non-commercial data. Um, and in this sense, I'll use a few examples, such as the US dollar, been in a bull market it's going back to 2008. Now, the large trader commitment since 2014 has been positive, up to about 100, towards 100,000 contracts. And in these cases, we can even go back further. Let's go back to 2012. In all these cases, when the large trader data, the large trader contracts, when they've slipped back to the zero line, price has generally found a bounce. It found a support level and a bullish swing has started. And here, when it found that long sideways, what I was calling a wave two on the long-term chart, it found such a high point that you can see what happened. And when we came for what I am labeling as larger wave four here, reversion to zero, and another bounce for wave five. Now, looking at it currently, it's back at zero. So historically, based on past data, we can expect a bounce here. And tying this into the LA wave count I presented on the weekend, we can also expect a bounce either on this low or the next low and see a corrective move up, which I will probably, if we get a five-wave print, I'll be looking at a three-wave correction to sell into. 
But uh, interestingly, we're back at the zero line here. So I would expect new traders to come into the market now, just as they did here in 2016, in 2014, in 2012 and 13, and probably before that. I don't need to go back further to show you how this has worked historically. So expecting traders to enter soon. I went over the data. Please see the weekend video for more talk about the US dollar. Another chart, this is valuable. This is the second technique, going to zero, and it's been valuable in many ways. Looking at Australian US dollar, since the bull market started in 2016, and we have this kind of triangle here, every we went up to about 60,000 contracts, and every time it's reverted towards zero, it's found a low. You can see how the data's been going. All the large traders who are basically momentum and price followers, hedge funds and so on. Every time data reverts to zero, new traders come in. Now, at this current level, we are not at an extreme in COT data, but we are up there around 40 or so thousand contracts, towards 40, I think. And we may see, need to see at resistance here on the chart, um, see the weekend video for a bit of talk about this. We may, may need to see a bit of a retracement here in data, and then another bullish swing, which is what I am at this level preferring overall. So if we get a correction of this possible leading diagonal here, um, three wave correction, and another swing up, let's see how the data s reverts, but um, not reverts, resolves itself and works out. But I wanted to point out that each return to zero here found buyers. It's a very, very valuable data point. And uh, I will show two other commodities this works well on, gold and silver. Oh, one point I missed. When this works well, it's usually in trending markets. So US dollar reverting to zero each time in a bullish trending market. Aussie, Aussie US dollar in a kind of bullish market, I think, reverting to zero, finding buyers. So in medium and long-term perspectives, the reversion to zero finds buyers or sellers, depending on how it is. I, I can show another one where sellers came in. I'll show that later. But um, in the metals, gold and silver, these are long-term bullish um, markets. And as such, every reversion to zero, even in a bear market as we've had since 2011, has found buyers. As you can see here, hits towards hit zero or towards zero, buyers. Buyers here, buyers here for the big possible five-way move. And here we need a little bit more to the downside and buyers should come in as it approaches zero again. On a long-term chart, traders have been committed to the long side. Large traders have been committed to the long side for a long time. Peter Schiff has been killing this market since 2000, since 1999. He may be a perma bull on gold, but you know he's been right for he was right for 12 years or 13 years. Why wouldn't you be? It's looking corrective. So in any case, every move back to zero has found buyers, and I would expect that to happen again if we inch lower over the next week or two or three or so. Also, that ties into the extreme, extremely small number of gold bulls in the small trader percent. Um, okay, the other market I wanted to show, silver, same thing, even in a bear market since 2011, every time commitment comes down to zero, it finds buyers to a greater or lesser extent. Now, if the market is turning here for a three -way, after a three-wave move, I mean, we had that ridiculous flash crash, fat finger, um, rip-off move where it fell a couple bucks or so in, what, 10 seconds? If you don't know what I'm talking about on silver a few days ago, was it on Thursday or Friday? We had the spike down on Friday and it all happened within a few minutes from what? $16 down to 13 something and then market reversed. Flash crash, fat finger, and a few swear words I don't want to throw in. Um, but in any case, silver, every time commitment comes down to zero, bounce. So let's see, if we get a three-wave move here, one, two, and three, towards 15 and below, 
let's see if traders come in because we could have a long three wave move i will go over this briefly okay the the problem is that this bloody spike messes up the charts it really does muck it up so in any case if you get a kind of three wave move here and the trader level reverts to zero we're looking at a possible bullish move if this is the first impulse up. So it's worth keeping in mind because COT data in silver and in gold reverting to zero has been very valuable for trades. Okay, now I can go over two historic charts, um, or one anyway, to show what I meant about trends. Um, back to currencies to the Canadian dollar. Again, this is Canadian US dollar, not US Canadian dollar, dollar so it's flipped. Um, in the past few years, the Canadian dollar has been bearish. Every time the data has come back towards the zero line or a touch above, as you see on all these points, it's found sellers. Every time. Now, in my opinion, we're in a bullish swing here. I've gone over this at length. And we're coming off an extreme, historic extreme low. However, as we approach the zero line, I will again expect traders to come in. We may see more of a three-wave relief rally, which will tie into my view of see, needing to see a wave four and a wave five in this still, in this current um, down move in US Canadian dollar. And uh, we can expect once this COT data hits zero for retracement, and any three-wave retracement will be another chance to sell. And I mean a bigger three-wave retracement, not just the small ones we've been involved in for the past two months. And I think New Zealand, US dollar, um, uh, I went over this expecting it to come back from here. You see in the past in a trending, uptrending market, yeah, it's choppy, that's obvious, but it's, when it came back to zero, it found some buyers here too, here. And here, again, a bit below zero. So that's how I use COT data. Extreme points, historically, and reversions to zero in trending, medium and long-term trending markets. Very valuable data. Um, I recommend incorporating it, as well as the trader sentiment, as well as Elliott Wave, as well as candles, support resist resistance <laughs> guidelines, and all the other guidelines that are valuable. You don't have to... Um, stick to one or the other. The more data you would encapsulate and incorporate and use, the better, as long as you have a way of making it work and you understand how it works for you. Um, you know, there are a thousand ways to make money in the markets and probably a, just as, probably many fewer ways to lose it, probably a handful of ways to lose it and a hundred thousand ways to make it. So, in any case, um, that's how I use it. If you have any questions, let me know. But I recommend those sites that I mentioned, Finviz, Oanda for free, COT Base for free, and then for a small fee, a lot more. I'm not associated with them. I just point them out as a good site. So that's it. All right, good luck to everyone. Bye-bye.